is going on, everybody? Frank here for the Bakersfield Gentleman here at PCA 2021 at the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust booth with none other than Steve Sock himself. Steve, how you doing? I'm great, man. Fantastic. Oh, so yeah. that's what the gig is here. You're using your phone as the microphone. Exactly. You cheap exactly. bastards. Hey, it's effective. Well, you made me put it together later. Oh, <laughs> man. All right. I love it, man. So uh, let's get the, the big thing out of the way first. Your brand new cigar. You're just talking to me about it. Four completely different blends. Right. Can we get into those? Can you tell us a bit yeah, about it? Yeah, sure. Story? I mean, well, first off, what, what Stillwell Star is, is it's a luxury pipe tobacco cigar. But it's a cigar first that's had pipe tobaccos incorporated into it to give you a basic cornerstone of some of the basic types of pipe tobaccos. And I'll, and I'll cover those. But it's a cigar first, but just with different nuances and tastes and essences. So we have four distinct blends. There is the aromatic, which is kind of what most people would expect out of a pipe tobacco okay, cigar. Right. That fluffy, pillowy, that aromatic scent. And it's actually, of the four, it actually has a sweet tip. It's the only one. Okay. The sweetness on the head helps to complement this type of smoking. But it's not as um, syrupy sweet as most pipe tobacco cigars are. This is a much more measured approach. Okay. Then the second one is the English number 27, and that has a classic blend of English tobaccos, you know, primarily heavy in the Latakia on this one, but it's uh, Cyprian Latakia versus like Turkish or Lebanese, it's the higher okay. grade. And it's just, uh, gives you that really nice, smoky, rich, deep flavor. So whereas the Aramac number one is kind of a mild to medium cigar, this one's a medium to full cigar. Okay. And then we have two others. We have a, what we call Bayou 32, mm -hmm. and that's a classic uh, Virginia Perique blend, heavy dose of Perique. It's got a real interesting umami. It's got that zestiness from the red stove. It's got stove red Virginia in it. It's just, it's a really unique taste. And for the guys that smoke, they call these vapor blends in the pipe world. Okay. I think for the guys that smoke vapor, I think they're gonna go, wow, they really get it. And then the last one is we did a traditional Navy Flake styles you know which is you know kind of a english light kind of blend but normally it has some sort of like touch of navy rations to it to give it that little bit of extra and in the case of that tobacco uh we make it into a press cake in the case of uh the english 27 we also press those and um, and for those people i, I kind of should have said this in the beginning but i did not blend the pipe tobaccos i worked with the head blender at cornell and deal um, his name is Jeremy Reeves. Okay. He's, if you were in the pipe world, you'd, you'd be like, oh my God, that's right, Jeremy right, right. Reeves, right? You'd be fangirling. <laughs> but uh, but no, Jeremy turns out to be a, a fan of my cigars and I'm a fan of his work. And we got together and we said, hey, let's do this. Because like I said, I always did it casually. I would take some of my favorite pipe tobacco and just add it here and add it there. 20 cigars at a time, 50 cigars at a time. So. Uh, it was really cool to, to finally do this. Now, what will people think? Different story. Who the hell knows? <laughs> I mean, look, I made it. I love it. I think it's really interesting, unique, and great. I hope people try it. Um, but ultimately, whether anyone's buying it next year, we'll see. Now, did you run into any kind of problems when you were trying to blend the pipe tobacco uh, with the regular cigar tobacco. Was yeah, there like all of these, all of these pipe blends, they've all been customized to work with cigars. Okay. And this wasn't something where we just took some good pipe tobacco and just slapped it inside of a good cigar. This was actually a, this was a process. There was a lot of back and forth. And it's one of the reasons I'm so proud of it is because it gives you the experience. It gives you the aroma. It gives you the flavor, but it's not too much. It's there, it's right, you can tell, but it really works in concert. Mm -hmm. It really adds something to the experience. Now look, if you don't like cigars that are on the sweeter side, probably aromatic number one probably will not be for you. And if you don't like heavier style cigars, then probably English number 27 won't be for you. But it's really interesting. And it was one of the reasons why I made them all Toro size 6x52, because I didn't want anyone to use size as a differentiator. Right. And it's also the reason why the wrapper and binder on all four are identical. Only the filler recipe was changed because I didn't want, because you can make the argument that maybe the aromatic would have been better in a Connecticut shade, but I didn't want someone to try it because it's Connecticut shade. I want them to, I want them to smoke it and try it to get these type of uh, basic cornerstones of pipe blends. And look, 
I know a lot of people who try to smoke a pipe and it's a very frustrating experience. It constantly goes out on you. You keep getting tongue bite. And most people never make it out of the very beginning stages and they never get to enjoy it. Yeah. This gives you a way to enjoy some of those unique and different tobaccos, the Bosmos and the Gizmers and all of that stuff that you wouldn't otherwise have. So if you're really into tobacco and taste and flavor and nuances, I, I think this is a very exciting thing to try. It sounds interesting. I cannot wait to get my hands on some of them for sure. So, trade show wraps up tomorrow. Yep. What's next for you? You gonna get back to the factory? You gonna yeah, go home yeah, I'm gonna go back to the factory. Um, I, I have another, I, mean, I spent a lot of time there this year, a lot. I, I was there three weeks in June. I mean, so I'm still catching up from the COVID year, what I lost there, not being able to travel down. Um, God bless, we're doing super, super well. So that's putting a lot of pressure on us too. Yeah. Um, honestly, this new stuff, none of it's really gonna happen until we get towards the tail end of the year for the consumer. And just the fact that it even is happening is just a miracle given the current scenario. Um, I know there were a lot of companies that had a lot of good intentions to bring a lot of interesting new stuff to the show, but uh, my understanding is not a lot of it actually made it. Made it here, yeah. Right, because just everything is so jammed up. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So there is not going to be any rest of the near future. And for that, I'm going to continually bitch and moan about it, but I'm also really thankful. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I know you're busy. I know you got a lot more people to talk to. So thank you for your time. Yeah. Hey, pleasure. <laughs>